India's national treasure epic Ramayana described a war 880,000 years ago. Although it is an ancient war, it makes modern people stunned because its weapons are so cool. In the story, whether they are the main characters, supporting characters, and villains, they all drive an aerial chariot called Vimana. Vimana has different models and uses. Some Vimana were used for reconnaissance missions, which can be invisible. Some Vimana were used for fighting, and medium and large size Vimana were used for carrying people. It can hold hundreds of people at a time. There are also some tiny Vimana that one person can drive. Next, let's look at how the book describes the villain Ravana's Vimana. Ravana's aerial chariot is the most incredible, and it can appear and disappear at the will of its owner. Vimana is ancient India's fighter jet and aircraft, and it's not too slow. Ramayana said it could fly from Sri Lanka to Ayodhya across the entire South Asian subcontinent in one day. The incredible thing is the power of the aircraft. The power source is an ancient spell. So when you say a particular spell, the aircraft's power system is activated. Of course, this explanation is entirely unacceptable to modern people. So everyone regards Ramayana as an ancient fantasy novel. But recently, research findings on sound tell us that sound is not just a tool for communication. Instead, it has even more incredible uses. In the 1960s, a Swiss physician named Hans Jenny built on Schladny's experiments to study vibrational phenomena, what he called somatics. He spread quartz sand on a black drum with a diameter of 60 centimeter, connected a tuner under the drum, and started playing the song, making the drum vibrate. As a result, he found that quartz sand showed different geometric images under different singing. If the singing is at a low frequency, the quartz sand forms a simple pattern of circles. As the frequency of the sound increases, the number of concentric circles in the pattern will increase. After testing all kinds of music, Hans had another whim, and he made a strange sound into the tuner and said the sound, Om. It is a common Buddhist mantra, and it is the pronunciation of the beginning of Om Mani Pami Hum, which he had just read from a book introducing Tibet. After he said the sound, then something strange happened. Quartz sand slowly appeared on the drum with an extremely complex pattern. This pattern stunned hands on the spot. It was too similar to the mandala pattern drawn in the book. Mandala is the transliteration of the ancient Sanskrit. It means that there are all the mysteries of life and the universe in a circle-based pattern. In Vajrayana and the esoteric teachings of some ancient Indian religions, mandala is often used. It represents a model of the universe and how the practitioner's energies work. So, does the mantra really correspond to a particular symbol and energy? Hans had no way of answering this question. He had to repeat the experiment over and over again, leaving behind a variety of mandala shapes. Hans' research launched a new school of science called somatics. When everyone knew that there was such a magical side to sound, related experiments were carried out in full swing around the world. In the 1950s, George Smith, an American agricultural researcher conducted such an experiment by imitating Aboriginal Australians' ritual called Bora. He cut a piece of wood into a special shape, then tied the special piece of wood to a long wire and swirled it in a cornfield, and then the cornfield appeared in shape similar to the mysterious crop circle. Smith observes the sound the wood chips make as they spin. The corn stalks near it looked slightly burnt, and the ground underneath was noticeably drier than elsewhere. Smith speculated that the special audio might affect the plant's shape, which is also the reason for the magical crop circle. So you see, in this example, similar things appear at the same time. That is, a specific sound and a mysterious pattern corresponding to it. So here, it is the crop circle and the abnormal energy phenomenon again at the same time. Like in Mandala's example, Time has come to the millennium, and the experiment with sound has gone one step further. On this day, a physicist named Angelo Esposito at Columbia University was in the lab depressingly packing up things. Because in the past month, 
His experiments have not been very satisfactory, so Angelo decided to stop the investigation and organize his thoughts. After he cleaned up the experimental table, he put a table tennis ball into the audio instrument next to him. He turned on the audio equipment at will, but unexpectedly, something he'd never seen before appeared in front of him. The ping pong ball slowly floating. Angelo's fatigue disappeared when he saw this phenomenon, and he jumped up suddenly. He hurriedly adjusted the audio, and he found that the ping pong ball could be lifted only under special audio, and different audio frequencies made the ping pong ball float at different heights. At this time, Angelo was stunned and his breathing almost stopped because he felt that a new discovery was at the door. In 2019, Angelo's team published a paper saying that sound, like light, also has wave particle duality. Just as the particles of light are photons, the particles of sound are called phonons and phones also have mass. But this mass is different from what we usually understand. When phonons are pulled by gravity, they move in opposite directions. That is, phonons have negative mass, which repels gravity. Therefore, it will not fall under the pull of gravity, but will rise. And it has the characteristics of anti-gravity. Anti-gravity is the key here, and it is highly relevant to the ancient Indian aircraft Vimana we told at the beginning and the story that we will talk about later. But so far, Angelo's team has used sound to float a heavyweight object like a ping pong ball at best. The ancients seem to know more than today's scientists. In the 10th century AD, the Arab historian Al Masudi wrote a story about an ancient secret he heard while visiting Egypt. Al Masudi wrote how the pyramids were built. The builders first used a magic papyrus to press it under the four sides of the boulder to be transported, and then took a metal rod to hit the boulder, making a sound of a unique frequency. And then, an incredible scene appeared. The boulder began to levitate into the air, hovering at a height slowly. And then, the stick holder knocked on another stone so that the stone was also suspended under the action of the sonic crane so that the boulders floated up like soldiers and lined up in a row. Then tap again. The queue of boulders drifted forward slowly and regularly, as if they had received an order. The key to the whole process is that metal rod. Usually, the stick holder will let the boulders float to a position 45 meters in front of him and stop for a while. After that, it seems to check whether the boulders are neat just like checking whether the placement of things on the conveyor belt on the production line is messy to ensure that the conveyor belt continues to function correctly. Then, the stick holder repeats the previous operation, knocking on the stone with a metal stick and giving orders until all the rocks have reached the designated position. In order to carry the stones to a higher position, the stick holder must tap the specific stone and give instructions to make it float higher. Besides, to carry it accurately, the stick holder had to keep knocking and fine-tuning the float position of the stones. This scene is as if the dispatcher at the construction site is directing the crane operator. The stick holder is not only the dispatcher of the construction site, but also like the band's conductor, pointing around with a stick, which completely subverts the picture of the construction of the pyramids in our imagination. It was not built by a group of sweaty slaves under the scorching sun, under the shouts of overseers with whips, using pulleys, levers, filling, and slopes, but in a mysterious ritual, in a very artistic way, holding a magical metal rod to command, and finally built the Great Pyramid. It isn't easy to find a reasonable explanation for this scene from the field of known science, but understanding this scene from the perspective of the newly emerging somatics is not entirely mystical. Sound particles have the characteristics of anti-gravity. Since it can make a ping pong ball float, it can also make a boulder float, whether we can find a trick to use this energy effectively. A similar technique is recorded in the Old Testament, in the story of the Israelites destroying the walls of Jericho with the sound of trumpets. Jericho City is an essential town in Canaan. If the city is measured according to its current size, the city wall is as high as 9 meters. It has two layers of city walls, inner and outer. Even if the outer city wall is breached, it will be equally challenging to break through the inner city wall. 
So, the city of Jericho 3,000 years ago was really solid. How, then, was such a fortified city to be breached? The Bible says that Israeli warriors marched out early in the morning, and at the back of the large army, the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant, the chest containing the tablets of the Ten Commandments. The specifications, dimensions, and materials of the Ark of the Covenant were specifically given by God and then made. In front of the procession carrying the Ark of the Covenant, seven priests were holding horns. They sounded the trumpets, and the whole parade marched slowly around the city. During the entire process, no one spoke. Only the sound of the horn was sometimes low and sometimes loud. It makes the Jerichoans inexplicable. They have never seen such a war in their entire life. So what are the Israelites doing? After the march, the Israelites returned to the camp to rest, and the day's action was over. In ancient and modern times and all over the world, there is only one case of attacking a city in this way. The Jerichoans, who were initially panicked, thought at this time that maybe the Israelites were either stupid or crazy. Others felt that it might be some religious ritual before the siege. Anyway, the Jerichoans could not understand the rules of the Israelites' faith, so they had to be on their guard. The following day, the mysterious Israeli army reappeared. The same is moving forward slowly. The same priest, the horn, the Ark of the Covenant, and the same circle around the city. And just like that, the next day's military operation came to an end. It went on like this for six days, and the Jerichoans were numb to the Israelites' bizarre and ridiculous behavior. Then, finally, they thought that maybe Israelites had nothing to do with our impregnable walls, so they had to play tricks. On the seventh day, when the sound of the trumpets of the priests of Israel came from afar, the defenders of Jericho stretched and opened their sleepy eyes to see that the Israelites came out for a walk again today. They watched the Israeli procession pass under the city like a parade of troops. However, things are a little different today. This time, Israelites walked seven times around the city walls. Then, when the priest's last trumpet sounded, all the Israeli soldiers suddenly let out a massive shout in an instant. The overwhelming sound made every Jerichoan's hair stand up, and they didn't expect such a scene. Immediately afterward, a dull, loud rumbling sound came from under his feet. The whole city seemed to be echoing the Israelites' cry, and it also made a low roar. Then suddenly, the city walls began to crumble, opening a few big holes. This is probably the only time recorded in history that a city has been knocked down with only sound. The following is how the History Channel interprets this age-old mystery. There are 12 gems on the priest's breastplate. When the incantation is chanted, the sound wave matches a particular frequency of the gems, and the gems emit light beams. This beam then activates an unknown mechanism within the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant amplifies the frequency of the horn sound. The role played by the gemstone here is similar to the mandala mentioned at the beginning. It has a corresponding relationship with a specific sound frequency, but the gemstone also plays another role here, which activated the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant played the role of the amplifier in the audio equipment, causing the building materials of the city wall and the horn's frequency to resonate, thereby destroying the city wall. Let's go back to the question posed at the beginning of this episode. The dynamic principle of modern aircraft is aerodynamics. So what is the dynamic principle of the ancient Indian aircraft, Vimana? Perhaps the power comes from a unique sound frequency. Since the energy of sound can make boulders hang in the air, it can destroy solid city walls. And of course, it can also drive aircraft. Its corresponding pattern is mandala. Therefore, Mandala is the verification code and switch to activate energy.